One of the things about owning a Traxxter is that once in a while the Traxxter may leave you stranded. This is the current location of my Traxxter on this hillside. Um, I was trying to climb this slope. I'm holding the camera level so that kind of shows you the slope. I suppose showing you that tree is straight up and down, so it gives you an idea. Anyway, I was climbing this slope and decided to turn around and come down the hill, and as soon as I did, the engine quit. So, took a VOM and my first thought was the CD amplifier. So, pulled a spark plug, no spark, thought the CD amplifier was bad, but then I did the regular checks um, and the points wire was showing that when the points were closed it still had 8 ohms of resistance so that means some piece of crap got in the points gap and unfortunately that means pull the flywheel so that's what I'm about to do um, I brought a majority of the tools that I need, but I'm going to give some pointers. Here's one of the things that I almost always use. And you might say, wow, don't you want to get your hands dirty? And that's not it at all. It's that I don't want to freeze. <laughs> um, temperature right now is about 40 degrees, and it's fall, and Working on the Traxxter at all is going to require some nimble finger work. And so it may not seem like much. These are 5 mil nitrile gloves. Uh, nitrile, I don't know how you pronounce it. But uh, that is enough insulation to prevent you from getting too cold doing just about any work where you can still feel you have the tactile senses that your fingers normally provide. So I start with those and then I kind of have a kit full of things. Uh, there's a CD amplifier, a VOM, flashlight, and all the regular tools to do the work. So I'm going to pull the flywheel and uh, yeah, we'll see how long that takes. Okay, I just took the cover off of the engine compartment and just show you a few things in here that have to come off. Um, you notice that the points wire, this is the one coming from the flywheel, and the CD amplifier points wire input. I think you can see that there. Uh, they're disconnected at the moment. For <coughs> excuse me, for testing. Um, you'll notice the date on that CD amplifier is a few days ago. I actually went ahead and replaced it without uh, doing my normal checks first. And that reminded me to do my normal checks first because replacing it didn't fix the problem. Which is a big uh, newbie kind of mistake and I can't believe I did it. Uh, but basically the project here is to pull the recoil, disconnect uh, recoil, disconnect the governor, remove the air box and air filter, and remove the uh, air shroud. That will reveal all of the things we need to get to, which is the flywheel that's inside, pull the flywheel without damaging the ignition cam, clean the points or replace as needed, and then re uh, put everything back together again. Um, before I put it all back together again, I'll do another test on this wire right here, and make sure that this has zero ohms when the points are closed. And um, I think it's in the position where it's going to show 8 ohms. I'll put the ohm meter on there and we'll get a glimpse of that. Alright, so we have the leads hooked up 
to the VOM. VOM is set in resistance mode and uh, it's showing the wrong number right at the moment because I'm not applying any pressure to that ground probe. But uh, doing resistance, it doesn't matter whether it's red or black, uh, whichever probe goes into what direction. But basically we're doing a continuity check. Uh, the points are aligned so that they should be closed right now. I did that by rotating the crankshaft on the engine, either through the hand start or under the hood by turning the cooling fan. So anyway, I'm going to just apply a little pressure here, just very slight. And that'll make the VOM read out. It's showing 3.68, which is different than it was when I initially had the problem. It should read zero, by the way. Uh, sometimes, depending on the setting on the VOM, it'll read uh, 0 0.01 or 0, 0.0 something. Uh, as long as it's 0, 0.0 anything, that's pretty much the same as zero resistance. The fact that there's any resistance at all across the points right now is the reason the tractor won't start. Uh, the CD amplifier is waiting for um, a direct link to ground through the points before it delivers a spark. And because the VOM only is showing or is showing a resistance, the amplifier never gets the signal to throw a spark. Um, if I were to turn on the ignition, I should say if I were to reconnect the negative ground or negative battery terminal and turn the engine over or even apply power this is like a troubleshooting tip if I were to put a jumper into this connection which is the points input on the CD amplifier and apply power to the CD amplifier and tap this jumper to ground it would spark once for every tap that I tap because that's zero resistance. Uh, because, like I showed on the VOM, there is some resistance, it's not going to work. So I have to clean out whatever crap got into the points uh, contacts under the flywheel and uh, should be real easy and engine should start. I was uh, just taken some things apart and thought I'd share some more, more advice about uh, what's happening under here. I took out the uh, air cleaner cover, which is pretty easy to do. Uh, this tab, sorry, this tab here goes across this face here and connects to this uh, bolt here. And then the air cleaner, best way to get the air cleaner out is to push the T-handle all the way forward, which gives more clearance here. Get this um, flexible line out of the way, and then push the air cleaner all the way that way. And you don't have to bend the air cleaner out of shape at all. But once you get it lined up in this corner, it should just slide right out of this area. Uh, without bending it a lot. But now a more important thing is I'm about to remove the three screws that hold this housing on. Before I do that, notice that the choke is wide open. I want to close the choke because the last thing I want to do is drop any one of these three screws down the throat of the carburetor. So a simple uh, security or safety feature is to just close the choke, pull the screws out, and this uh, housing will come right off. And I use a rather large screwdriver to do this so that I don't mar up the uh, screw heads on those. And also, if the gasket behind here is bad, I go ahead and replace that too. Um, it's usually not in too bad of condition, but you don't need the extra air leakage around the carburetor. It's better to have all the air come through the filter and make sure that your engine lasts as long as possible. All right. 
air cleaner housing is off. You can see the carburetor is exposed there. Choke is still closed. Uh, next step is to get the recoil off and uh, the governor. And actually, if I was really thinking, I'd have these covered with uh, a sandwich bag or something or a piece of tape to keep any crap out of these connections. Uh, maybe I'll do that in a minute. Uh, the trick for the governor is to not really take it off. There are There is a uh, bolt back here where my finger is that uses a 7 16 and I use one uh, open end box end 7 16 on one end and then I use a ratcheting box wrench on the other end and I'm usually able to take it off uh, from here which will and I remove it um, but I don't remove it from here or from the carburetor because none of this stuff is in the way when I'm working on the flywheel over here but I do take off uh, this belt, this bracket will hang loose over here and uh, anyway I can get in here fairly quickly again everything that I'm gonna do I'm gonna use this gigantic screwdriver it works for these screws down here um, fits in there really nice if your screws have never been uh, replaced or marked up you'll still have a flat blade here I've seen several machines with stainless steel uh, Phillips screws here which are just fine as well uh, all right, I'll be right back. Another thing to point out is that these three uh, bolts here, they're 7 16 and two of them do not have washers underneath because the space of this metal bracket that holds the governor is the spacer. On this one bolt here, however, there is a washer right there a spacer washer that's the same thickness as this piece of metal here so that the recoil sits on there square. When I'm taking it apart I make specially sure that this spacer washer does not fall inside the flywheel. It's not that I can't get it out in a minute but it is helpful to remind myself that I certainly don't want to drop it during reassembly either so I take special care. Uh, so there's actually two spacers. There's a, space, a spacer can I even get that? There's a spacer there and then there's this bracket which is a spacer. Same thing over there is that there is a it's about a half inch thick spacer and a washer over there. And I think you can see that. Anyway, I want to make sure that none of that stuff drops in the flywheel now or during reassembly. Okay, four bolts, and the governor is now over here. If I were, if I had planned ahead, I would have a small bungee cord that's holding it to this uh, bar right here. But instead, I tucked it uh, up against the edge here. And uh, next steps are to take off uh, this. These are half-inch bolts. Um, and this is usually a tight fit here for any kind of a socket. There we go. Um, so an open end wrench works better here. Otherwise just getting it uh, loosened up with a socket is helpful and then finish up with a wrench. And then the eight screws to get this cover off. So uh, eight screws, three bolts. We'll have access to the flywheel nut that's hiding under here and then put the flywheel puller on. We're almost there. All right, so the cover is off. The um, governor drive pulley is removed. And I forgot to show one important thing. There is a hole in the side of the flywheel, uh, two of them actually, and this is a 3 8 extension. Uh, 3 8 drive extension. Notice I tore my glove. Oh my god. Gonna get my hand dirty. Uh, anyway, that was from one of these uh, fins here. So if you need to turn the flywheel, uh, which I, by removing these bolts from here, 
um, I had to apply some pressure on these bolts and a way to hold the flywheel still while you do that is to insert this extension here and tuck it up against the casting. This is the aluminum, oops, sorry, the aluminum casting back here. And I can put quite a bit of pressure on here without damaging anything. Um, so I wanted to rotate counterclockwise to remove these bolts and this prevented the rotation of the flywheel from going counterclockwise and therefore made it easy for me to remove these bolts. I use this same system for here, though I have an air tool <laughs> that just pops this off in no time. And a portable bottle of air, which is also very beneficial. I don't use that for reassembly, uh, which actually reminds me, I never over tighten anything on the Traxster. Uh, just snug is good enough, don't need to strip threads, nothing ever vibrates loose, and I use um, uh, anti-seize, a copper-based anti-seize when I reassemble things so that um, things always come off easily uh, during the next service interval. All right, so I just have to get the uh, starter belt off. That's this guy right here. He comes off pretty easily without me uh, having to loosen up the starter wool. Well, I might have to loosen up this starter bolt here, and that's a half inch. This is a 9 16ths in this hole here. There should be a plug here. I don't know why it's not here, but there's supposed to be a steel uh, plug that helps keep most of the hot air on that side of the engine. Uh, let's see if I can find that for reassembly. and. Uh, yeah, then we'll get the flywheel off and see what's going on under there. All right, and here we have the super fast way of getting the flywheel nut off. Half, well, it's actually a three quarter drive with a half inch uh, reducer. And that is a 15 16 socket. Let's see what happens. And that's how that works. Oh, what's the system? This is a Freon bottle from the old Freon 12 days. See, it says. And uh, this kit used to be available in hardware stores uh, to screw onto the Freon bottles to convert it to what you see here. 125 PSI of air in here. Uh, this is the hose. This is a special hose I use. Notice it's got these wire ties. The only thing I use this for is when I use this portable bottle with this air tool. There's lots of these uh, real thin, like quarter inch di diameter, um, self-coiling, rigid plastic tubes uh, available. You know, and they're, they're like, I don't know, four inches in diameter and they self-coil. Anyway, the, not enough air goes through that hose to make this work. So uh, I use a full size hose. This is, I think, a 3 8 Anyway, that made short work of that. And now to put on the puller. Okay, this is the puller that I use. Um, I don't think these are the same 5 16 bolts that came with this. These are. Uh, longer I think than what was available in this kit but notice I thread them to all about the same uh, amount of thread sticking out and that's to uh, make sure that the pin the center pin um, pushes straight on the shaft so what you'll see here is the point uh, of the push the wheel puller up against the main shaft of the uh, the crankshaft of the flywheel and these guys are snug but not too tight and then next thing is to tighten this up and I'll use a crescent wrench and then we hit this with a hammer and it should just uh, pop the flywheel right off. Okay, smacked it twice with a hammer. Um, that doesn't normally work that way unless the machine's been worked on in the last few years. So now, just wiggling and pulling, and the thing I want to make sure I don't do, 
is brake the cam. It's the, uh, I would call it the most important part of the ignition system. This guy right here. So, it's in good shape, hasn't been damaged. Um, and the problem is going to be in between those points right there. So, um, diagnosis, it doesn't look dirty at all in there. Um, another thing, uh, things that can cause a problem with the points going high in uh, resistance is an oil film. So if the oil seal, which is behind here, goes bad, oil can be distributed on the inside of the flywheel. I don't see any residue that would give that impression. It was running just fine and then quit. So uh, it's less likely to be an oil film thing, more likely to be just one little bitty piece of debris that got in the wrong place at the wrong time. So um, the back side of the flywheel here, I brought some starting fluid with me. Starting fluid is my favorite cleaner. It uh, doesn't seem to have any residue and the reason I say it doesn't seem to is because it says on the can that it has an upper cylinder lubricant in it. Now, what is an upper cylinder lubricant? I would imagine that means a small amount of oil for a two-stroke engine, uh, for when you use it on a two-stroke engine. But uh, it doesn't seem to be much of anything when you do spray it on a surface. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and clean up this and then I'll show you how I'll clean the points. Alright, so um, I used starting fluid to spray onto the flywheel surface and um, it did show that the starting fluid changed color and then dripped out and then I wiped it with a paper towel and that's the kind of dirt I got out of it. It looks like mostly rust, but then there's, I don't know, some kind of possible oily film. It's a little more than I thought I'd get, but not a horrible amount. So now, how do I clean the points? I, I know that these points are less than three years old, so I'm not going to replace them. And there's not a problem with the point gap or the uh, point, uh, what is that? The follower lubricant, I guess. Anyway, I know that there's not a problem with any of that stuff or the uh, adjustments or anything, so here's what I'm going to do. This is a piece of cardboard from a organic food cardboard box. Now the reason I use that is because there's very little uh, extra crap on the box. There's not a lot of, well there is no um, glossy finish on the box. There's just that printing. So I'm going to use this tip down here. I'm going to spray it with that same starting fluid and then I'm going to wipe the inside of the points with this. So it'll be a cleaner and the cardboard acts as a very light abrasive uh, to clean the area. So uh, I do all this stuff off camera because it's hard to hold the camera and do the cleaning at the same time. So I'll be right back. All right. Um, I have not moved the flywheel one bit since we took our initial reading with the VOM. So, um, oh, one more thing. After I used the cardboard uh, from a cardboard, a thin uh, organic food cardboard box, uh, then I used this post-it note. So basically I held the points here so that I could adjust the gap with my finger by pushing here. 
and while adjusting the gap I slid this piece of cardboard back and forth with some resistance between the two points um, contacts and I turned it over so that the part without the letters on it scrubbed both the top and the bottom contact and then um, remember that this piece of cardboard also had some starting fluid on it so it was wet with cleaner so then I took this post-it note which is really tightly bound paper and then I did exactly the same thing of course not with the sticky side you can see that maybe the stickiness there um, with the non-sticky edge um, and any bond paper would work for this but it has to be really tightly bond, bound paper because you don't want to leave any fibers of paper in the contacts anyway I did exactly the same thing with the piece of paper and now we're going to check the ohm meter and we're looking for zero and look at that so I cleaned out between seven and eight ohms worth of crap out of the points gap and that should take care of it I should reassemble it and uh, it should be all fixed without touching the gap or adjusting the points at all so uh, just reverse the process um, the main thing about reassembly is you can feel the key I think you can see it there this is the key way for mounting the uh, flywheel that key has to be exactly 180 degrees from this post or basically over here so I'll turn the crankshaft over to point this key that way and uh, then that's the trick to being able to line up the cam let's see where did I put the cam here he is um, this is a very important piece of ignition hardware this is that very important piece of hardware as you can tell I've changed the context we're no longer in the woods but I wanted to be very clear about how this ignition cam is used in the flywheel uh, first of all I'll note that this is a complete ignition cam there are times when the installation actually causes parts of this cam to break off uh, there's actually four teeth here and three teeth here if uh, the cam is missing any of these components it may or may not operate correctly so the cam when placing it back into the flywheel for uh, reinstallation the cam has to lock into this uh, advance this is the spark advance system another good point is to point out that your flywheel may differ this flywheel has a stop uh, this is a 25 horse flywheel with the stop the 29 horse flywheel has a dog which is like a thumb shaped thing that doesn't stick up like this but lays down flat kind of in this direction uh, not a big deal but I just didn't want you to be concerned that your flywheel doesn't have this tab so to insert the, the cam into the flywheel you just lock it into these gears with this gear section and it should just drop right into place I just did a little snap motion to make sure that this ear caught on the back side of this and to test it you can just move the advance a little bit and it should rotate so it's uh, not tight in there and that's why um, you have to be very careful with the reassembly what I do is I hold the flywheel up so that I can look through the uh, the center hole in the flywheel and I'm looking through this direction to see the end of the crankshaft and I slowly slide the crankshaft or excuse me the flywheel onto the crankshaft okay so the flywheel is reinstalled and I just want to make a point about something um, what you'll feel about the flywheel up here there's minimal gap between this backing plate and the flywheel the flywheel itself doesn't wobble I'm pushing 
pressure top bottom top bottom and it doesn't oh sorry top bottom top bottom and it's not wobbling on the shaft here um, and when I used this flashlight to point at the ignition behind the flywheel then I look as I slide the flywheel on I'm looking down the hole of the flywheel and looking at this shaft so that it stays centered the whole time that it's installed and if I hear the cam fall off then I have to start over which that didn't happen this time but it does sometimes happen or if the flywheel doesn't seat like I'm showing you where it's solidly seated that means that the cam itself is pinched and uh, will probably break if we put the nut on but this I can feel that it solidly um, yeah <laughs> I think you get the idea. It's it's installed correctly because uh, there's no place else for it to go. If it was wobbling right now and would not seat correctly to this position, then I'd know that the cam is out of place and that I'd be probably breaking something. All right, more steps. All right, next step is to install the starter belt. And at the last second, I thought, wait a minute. It's been about three years since I replaced the starter belt. Let's see if a new one is in store. And uh, I don't know what the width is of that writing, but on the left, that's the brand new belt. And there's about four lines of writing. And on the right, there's about three lines total of writing. So I would say it's about at 50% of its useful life, the belt on the right. Sorry, I can't tell if that's in focus or not. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace it, and that might save me a service interval some point in the future. Just thought I'd point that out, that if you have to go under the flywheel, depending on how long it's been since you've replaced the last starter belt, it might be a good idea to swap it out all right i think it's too dark for this uh, but everything's buttoned up i checked for spark and it's just twilight so hopefully i can get this home um, let's see what happens Here goes. 